Director Hayao Miyazaki's 2008 film Ponyo delivers many of the qualities we have come to expect from Miyazaki, like stunning animation, lovable characters, realism within fantasy, and a story that teaches us to love each other, nature, and ham. Ponyo wants ham! All she thinks about is ham, Mom. Like most Miyazaki films, Ponyo also adapts myths, legends, and culture, but reimagines all these in a way that only Miyazaki and Studio Ghibli could. In this video, I will do my best to break down those sources, the myths, legends, and culture that inspired Ponyo. Possibly. Much of this video is my personal interpretation. So with that said, let's get started. Miyazaki rarely reveals the stories that influenced his stories, but Ponyo is an exception to this. Miyazaki admitted the biggest influence on his Ponyo story, and the most obvious, which is the Hans Christian Andersen fairy tale, The Little Mermaid. Yes, the same fairy tale that Disney adapted in the 90s, but which omitted the more disturbing aspects of the original tale, like the detail that the Little Mermaid has no soul and needs to marry the prince to get one before she's turned into sea foam. Or so she thinks until she's turned into an invisible air spirit. But anyway, despite the differences between Disney's Little Mermaid and Anderson's original tale, the Disney version is still overall more accurate to the original fairy tale than Ponyo. In truth, Miyazaki only adapted a bit of the basic structure and a few plot elements from Anderson's fairy tale. For example, Ponyo is a magical sea creature who lives in the sea with her father and sisters, until she becomes curious about the surface world and a young boy who lives there. Like the Little Mermaid, Ponyo grows legs and becomes human-like to be with the boy on the surface, but can only live there permanently if the boy loves her with all his heart. This is something the boy, or rather Prince, doesn't do in the original tale, but does in Ponyo, and of course the Disney version as well. Ponyo, of course, is not a mermaid. She's a fishy in the sea who becomes a little girl with the round tom me. At least according to the Ponyo song. At first, Ponyo is referred to as a goldfish by the human characters. A goldfish? which makes me wonder if they've ever seen a goldfish. The Japanese Ranchu or Oranda goldfish do resemble Ponyo a little more closely than the common goldfish, but her appearance is still pretty far from a goldfish. I believe Ponyo's initial appearance may have been influenced by a particularly gruesome Japanese ghost story called Baika Hyoritsu and a spirit called Kingyo no Yore, or the goldfish ghost. This story was recorded by Japanese poet and writer Santo Kyoden in the 19th century, and if you thought Anderson's original Little Mermaid tale was a bit disturbing, it's about to get real. The story tells the tale of a samurai named Karakoto and his wife, Kakehashi. Because Kakehashi cannot bear children, the couple hire a mistress named Monohana to act as surrogate. The arrangement goes well at first, however a conniving neighbor convinces Kakehashi that her husband has been having an affair with Monohana all along, and now the two plan to murder her. Filled with jealousy and rage, Kakehashi gruesomely murders Monohana and her unborn child. As Monohana dies, her blood spills into a goldfish tank, which contaminates the goldfish inside with her restless spirit. As a result, the goldfish begin to mutate and change form. Their heads, eyes, and bellies swell, resembling Monohana's murdered body. This is the origin of the Ranchu goldfish, according to Kyoden, but the goldfish ghost also resembles Ponyo in her goldfish form. In the illustration that appears in Kyoden's book, the goldfish fins also resemble Monohana's kimono, similar to Ponyo's fins, which resemble a dress. In the story, the goldfish transform when they taste Monohana's blood, which is also similar to Ponyo, who becomes more human when she tastes Sasuke's blood. I want to be clear that the Baika Hyoritsu tale is not the messed up origin of Ponyo. However, I suspect that Ponyo's visual design was influenced by this story, and probably not even Kyoden's version, but rather the slightly more kid-friendly version drawn by mangaka Shigeru Mizuki in his Yokai Guidebook. Aside from the goldfish ghost in the aforementioned story, Ponyo's somewhat strange appearance may have also been influenced by the Ningyo, a yokai often called the Japanese mermaid, although a much more kawaii version. Another clue may be found in Ponyo's name, that is her original name, Brunhilde, which her father uses before Sasuke gives her the name Ponyo. Did you taste blood, Brunhilde? My name is not Brunhilde, it's Ponyo. 
Brunhilde is the name of a shield maiden and Valkyrie of Norse and Germanic mythology. She is perhaps best known as a character in Richard Wagner's Ring Cycle operas, but is also an important figure in the Norse saga of the Volsungs, on which Wagner's operas are loosely based. Ponyo isn't exactly a Valkyrie like Brunhilde, in that she doesn't decide who lives and dies on the battlefield, or carry slain warriors up to Valhalla on a magical steed, but Wagner's Brunhilde may have had some influence on Ponyo. Like Ponyo, Brunhilde is a magical being who falls in love with a mortal, Siegfried. Although in the operas, Siegfried is the grandson of Wotan, the Germanic version of the Norse god Odin. And, incidentally, Brunhilde is Wotan's daughter. Yes, Siegfried and Brunhilde are related, it's Wagner, don't worry about it. Also like Ponyo, Brunhilde loses her magical status and becomes mortal. For Ponyo, this is a choice, but for Brunhilde, it's punishment for defying Wotan. The awesome Ghibli music composer Joe Hisaishi even included a few nods to Wagner's operas in his Ponyo score. I can't play any of it due to copyright issues, but Hisaishi's score during this scene is a clear homage to Wagner's famous Ride of the Valkyries leitmotif. The homage fits the scene perfectly as Ponyo emerges from the sea riding a magical wavefish, very much like a Valkyrie who emerges from the sky riding a magical steed. Another reference to Brunhilde may be found in the character of Grandma Mare, Ponyo's mother. This 1897 illustration by French artist Gaston Boussière is a well-known depiction of Brunhilde. As you can see, she is adorned in jewelry and has long flowing red hair, very much like Grandma Mare. Of course, Ponyo also inherited the ginger gene. In the epic poem Nibelungenlied, Brunhilde is also introduced as a queen of the sea, like Grandma Mare. While making Ponyo, Miyazaki stated he was inspired by an 1852 John Everett Millier painting which depicts Shakespeare's Ophelia. In the painting, Ophelia is submerged in water and again has long red hair like Grandma Mare. Grandma Mare's name is likely a reference to the grandmother character in The Little Mermaid. Although I should note that Mare means sea in Latin and Italian and tide in some of the Romance languages. In Anderson's original tale, The Little Mermaid's father is a widower, but her grandmother serves as a mother figure and mentor. Grandma Mari's name may be a reference to a mermaid character, however, she is a goddess of the sea. It's difficult to say which goddess of real-world mythology the character was inspired by, as there are many of these found in the mythology of many cultures. If you want to go back really far, there is the ancient Babylonian goddess of the primordial seas, Tiamat. Then, there is the Chinese goddess of seafarers, Mazu, or the African Orisha and goddess of the rivers and oceans, Yemoja, of the Yoruba religion, just to name a few. In the Greek pantheon, the most prominent goddess of the sea is likely the wife of Poseidon, Amphitrite, but I think it's more likely Grandma Mari was influenced by the primordial Greek goddess of the seas, Thalassa, whose name literally means sea in Greek. Thalassa is referenced in Aesop's fables which are well known in Japan, and like Grandma Mare, she is sometimes depicted as a giant, as in this illustration by Arthur Rackham. In this scene, Miyazaki included a very clear hint regarding Grandma Mare's identity. Sasuke's father, Koichi, and the other sailors refer to Grandma Mare as Kanon, the Japanese name for the Buddhist Bodhisattva of Mercy called Guanyin in Chinese. The line is translated to Goddess of Mercy in English, the Goddess of Mercy! But in Japanese, Koichi clearly says the name Kanon. The sailors even pray to Grandma Mare as they might to a statue of Kanon in a Buddhist temple. Aside from embodying mercy and compassion, Guan Yin is also a patron of sailors and fishermen, and is thought to calm the seas when sailors are threatened, not unlike Grandma Mare who calms the tsunami caused by Ponyo. However, Grandma Mare doesn't exactly resemble the usual depictions of Kanon found in Japan aside from a few features like the urna-like jewel in the center of her forehead and her size, which is on par with some of the bigger statues of Kanon found in Japan, like the 100 meter tall Dai Kanon statue in Sendai. At one point, Grandma Mare says the sea resembles her Devonian sea. It looks like my ancient Devonian sea. If she existed during the Devonian period, that would make her at least 358 million years old, considerably older than the religion of Buddhism itself. So it's possible the sailors mistook a primeval sea goddess of mysterious origin for the Bodhisattva of Mercy. The golden fish that follow Grandma Mare are likely a reference to the Buddhist symbol of two golden fish, 
This is one of the eight auspicious symbols of Buddhism and Hinduism. A Buddhist symbol would make sense when you consider Grandma Mari's connection to the Buddhist figure of Kanan. However, considering the influence of Wagner's operas again, the fish may also be a reference to the Rheingold. In the operas, this magical metal is guarded by the Rhine Maidens before it is stolen by the dwarf Alberic and forged into a magical ring. Another influence from Wagner's operas may be found in the character of Fujimoto, Ponyo's father. Like Fujimoto, Wotan is the father of Brunhilde. Wotan also disguises himself as a wanderer while meddling in the mortal world. Kind of like Fujimoto, if you consider his eccentric pinstripe suit-wearing gardener look to be a disguise. Aside from Wotan, Fujimoto also shares a few characteristics with the Dragon Kings of Asian mythology. These deities are called Longwang in Chinese mythology, but I should note that they also appear in Indian mythology and made their way into Japanese mythology as well. Like Fujimoto, the Longwang are guardians and rulers of the seas who dwell in underwater palaces. They may appear in human-like form or that of a dragon and are sometimes depicted with red skin or hair like Fujimoto. Also like Fujimoto, the Dragon King of the Eastern Sea lost one of his more inquisitive daughters, Longnu, the Dragon Girl, to the practice of Buddhism after she quickly achieved enlightenment and became an acolyte of Guanyin. In a lesser known version of a well-known Japanese tale, Urashima Taro, the daughter of another Dragon King called Ryujin, is rescued by a fisherman, Taro, while in the form of a turtle, not unlike Sasuke who rescues Ponyo from the jar. However, the character of Sasuke is partly based on Miyazaki's son, Goro Miyazaki. Sasuke takes his name from a character in Natsumi Sosaki's novel, The Gate. Sosaki Sasuke lives at the bottom of a cliff, like Miyazaki Sasuke who met Ponyo at the bottom of a cliff by the sea. Incidentally, the film's title in Japanese translates as Ponyo on the cliff. Although he possesses godlike power, Fujimoto states that he was once human. I was once long ago a human myself. But despite his seemingly magical abilities, Fujimoto's language can sometimes sound a bit scientific. It's almost like he was an ancient marine biologist who became so advanced, his science began to resemble magic. The date on one of Fujimoto's elixirs may provide another clue regarding the character's influences. 1871 is pretty close to 1870, the publishing date of Jules Verne's novel, 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea. In the early 90s, Miyazaki created a concept for a series that adapted the work of Jules Verne, called Nadia, The Secret of Blue Water. Likewise, I think he may have adapted a few aspects of Verne's character, Captain Nemo, for Fujimoto, as well as Nemo's submarine, the Nautilus, for Fujimoto's submarine and underwater dwelling. Captain Nemo was an Indian prince who, after losing his family, dedicated himself to science and underwater exploration. Like Fujimoto, Nemo's knowledge of science and technology became extremely advanced. Nemo also became increasingly detached from humanity and life on the surface, although not quite as much as Fujimoto, who views humanity as a filthy nuisance polluting the pristine ocean. Nemo continued to help the surface world, while Fujimoto intended to wipe out humanity in what is hinted at being a flood myth-like scenario, after which a new explosion of sea life rivaling the Cambrian Age will take over. Luckily, Ponyo and Grandma Mari convince him otherwise, and he is able to coexist with humanity. Speaking of the flood myth, when Ponyo sets off Fujimoto's elixirs, it unleashes a tsunami on the town, which incidentally is based on the real harbor town of Tomonora in Hiroshima Prefecture. The town is then flooded like a mini, kid-friendly version of the flood myth. You might even compare Sasuke and Ponyo's adventure to that of Noah and his wife, or Deucalion and Pyrrha, to go with the Greek myth. Actually, there are many variations of that myth, and I don't have time. Of course, Ponyo's flood doesn't wipe out most of humanity like the myth, and in fact, all the residents of the town end up completely fine. As I implied earlier, Ponyo's sisters are inspired, firstly, by the Little Mermaid sisters in Anderson's fairy tale. However, if you're familiar with that tale, you may have noticed that Ponyo has considerably more sisters than the Little Mermaid. The Little Mermaid only has five sisters, while Ponyo has what looks like hundreds, maybe over a thousand. I believe their numbers might be a reference to the Oceanids of Greek mythology. The Oceanids are nymphs and daughters of the titans Oceanus and Tethys. 
These nymphs were said to number 3000, a brood comparable to Ponyo and her sisters. If you saw my video on Spirited Away, you might remember that I mentioned that some of the spirits in that movie resemble a yokai called Umibozu. Umibozu are spirits that dwell in the sea. In fact, their name literally means sea priest. In some depictions, they have a somewhat humanoid form, but in others, they appear as a dark, wave-like creature with bright eyes. This is how Shigeru Mizuki depicts them in his Yokai Guidebook, and this depiction looks very close to Fujimoto's wave creatures, except that Mizuki's Umibozu are much bigger. Regardless, I think it's likely Fujimoto employs Umibozu as helpers to retrieve Ponyo. Those are my guesses for the real-world sources behind Ponyo. If you noticed a reference to mythology or culture in Ponyo that I didn't mention in this video, let me know what it is in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like, subscribe to the channel, and hit the notification bell to be notified of new videos like this. Check out my video breakdowns of the mythology behind Spirited Away, Princess Mononoke, Avatar, and Naruto, linked on the screen. If you'd like to support the channel and help me make more videos, you can donate to the channel Patreon, linked below. Thanks for watching, and until next time.